Jan's house in Nashville right now with Hayes Carl. Hayes Carl, it's always a total pleasure to see you, man. Thanks for doing this. It's great to be back. Yeah, man, you guys sound great. I think every time we've done this in the past, I believe has been solo acoustic. I think that's true. And yeah. the three-part harmonies that are happening here during Soundcheck have been absolutely delightful, and I can't wait to share what you guys do with uh, with the internet right now. And all the tunes are going to be from You Get It All, which comes out October 29th. So congratulations to you in advance on that. Thank and what's you. happening first? Uh, we'll do the title track. You get it all. All my tame and all my wild, all my man and all my child, all my faults and all my scars, all my sometimes lucky stars, all my joys and my regrets, all my old guy Clark cassettes. I knew the night we met, you'd get it all. All my lows and all my highs All my truth and all my lies All my rights and all my wrongs All my from now love songs All my future, all my roots All my worn out cowboy boots That I kick off in the hall That you get it all And I'd rather drive you crazy Being more than you can stand then I let you try to love half a man And all my cards are on the table And darling, it's your call But I'm all in to lose or win Do you get it all? Thank you guys dude that sounds great i like that song a lot i like the way the three voices fit together this is a total pleasure for us so thanks for doing it well, thank you yeah I man appreciate that. we um so holly was telling me she had uh, reminded me that a texas a texas relocation had happened you're here and i'm not sure i don't think we've talked about this before i do remember hanging that texas flag behind you in the really old pace studio yeah, and yeah. then all your Guy Clark cassettes, that lyric in the uh, in in that tune, um, made me want to ask you how that relocation has expressed itself in your music. Boy, uh, if any at all, or does Hayes Carl just sound like Hayes Carl? Regardless yeah, I'm not. Of I don't think I've like changed my style any per se. Yeah, um, I, I've uh, living here in Nashville. Uh, you know, it's given me an opportunity to write with a lot of. Um, fantastic writers and a lot of fantastic writers in Texas too. Um, um, so I, I'm not sure it's it's really 
changed anything. It's just a stage in life and the place I'm living. I like it, and it's not. It, Nashville is pretty similar to Austin, where I'd come from, um, and um, I'm, I'm from Houston originally, but but I lived in Austin for about ten years, twelve years, and uh, they're very similar cities. Both, you know, music is the heartbeat of, of both towns, and um, um, so it, it's just it's felt like home even when I didn't live here. Do you feel like the, the do the music communities in both towns behave similarly ish to each other? Do you see is there like more? I mean, Nashville seems to me like a very ambitious place, but it does seem like yeah. that ambition serves a purpose. You know, like it's it's sort of the healthy version of it where you're all lifting each other up at the same time. And I haven't gotten that sense about Austin. But I'm not a musician. I don't know. I do this so I interact with lots of musicians, but I don't play. Is that to your experience and accurate assessment of the two places? I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like there's a absolutely a collective, you know, rooting for each other in Austin, and and I feel that in Nashville too. But there's also a million musicians in both towns, so it's hard to say that we're like all, you know, uh, rooting for each other in that way. But uh, um, I don't know. I just I think I think in both places people and respect um, uh, respect good art good craft and uh, uh if they see it no matter where it comes from they um uh they support it but yeah, there's also a lot of people that came up together i, I noticed in nashville there'd be like a crop of new writers or guitar players or producers or, or folks that have moved to town to try and make it and they you know like a lot of cities you come you come and you start off at the bottom rung and and you forge some real alliances that way because um y'all are all you know slugging it out together um so for me that experience was more in austin i, I can't i was a bit more established by the time i got to nashville and uh so i've got a lot of friendships and stuff but I, uh a lot of the people i'm still close with are people that i was touring with 20 years ago and 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 met early on because we have those bonds that were forged through the the hard times you yeah. know yeah Cool, man. Well, it's, I mean, it's been a total pleasure for us to be out on the road. It was fun having a New York location while that existed. It doesn't exist anymore, so we're just popping up all over the country and, you know, hanging out in your backyard as opposed to it always being in our backyard and some of those relationships. I mean, it's, it's nice. It's fun to be on tour, you know, and, and expanding our network that way. So yeah. thank you for making it cool. We appreciate it very much. And well, Thanks still... for coming to me. Yeah, man, of course. Um, we're going to hear three more from You Get It All. And uh, is, there a, is there a cell phone in a, like, nearby an amp? Is there an amp? Is there a phone? Make, make, make. Is it off, off, or like airplane mode? There's some kind of bag here. Ah, Jared's the culprit. Tim, Tim, could you grab the bag from Jared? Awesome, thank you. It's on the airplane. Yeah, I don't know. Could you, could you move that guy from the pedals though? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, what is uh, what's coming up second off of uh, You Get It All? This is a song that I wrote uh, with uh, a great songwriter named uh, Josh Morningstar, and uh, it's uh, it's about uh, it's a song sort of addressing uh, dementia or Alzheimer's from the perspective of somebody who's suffering through it and. Um, um, yeah, we just tried to to capture what I figured was probably a very uh, difficult and challenging experience for somebody. And uh, so we just wanted to tell their story. It's called Help Me Remember. Okay. Leaves on that ancient old oak tree are starting to turn The same shades as the flames of this fire that I'm watching burn And there's an unfinished crossword resting on the arm of this chair And for the life of me I can't recall if I'm the one who left it there And it feels so familiar as I watch you 
walk in the room And at first I don't recognize you But then I damn sure recognize that perfume And you kneel down beside me and gently take hold of my hand I say, baby, I'm scared and I'm not sure I know who I am Will you help me remember who it is that I used to be? Can you tell me the story of my family, my hopes and my dreams? Did I try to stand for something? Or would I always fold? Did I do things when I was young to be proud of when I was old? Was I a house on fire or was I just a slow burning ember? Could you please? Help me remember This ring on my finger is golden, faded and worn Like it was forged in the fires of love And has weathered the storm And I try to make sense of these old photographs on the wall But they're just faces and places that I, I don't know at all Will you help me remember? I feel like I'm losing my mind I know there's a story it's getting harder to find Did I protect my children? Stand up for my friends? How much damage did I do? Did I ever make amends? Did I try to stand for something? Or just not give a damn? Was I a believer in God and His plan? Did I light up your life like a full moonlit night in December? Or could you please help me remember? I need you to help me remember. Thank you. Yeah. Man, that is, that's heavy. That's a heavy tune about a, you know, thing that unfortunately people have to go through and it's got to be just like a, you know, scary and extremely lonely thing, especially if you have that awareness that, uh-oh, things are going wrong and don't know what's happening and just be scrambled and confused, but just aware enough that it's happening that you kind of are grabbing at what you used to be like. So that's, that's great, man. Yeah, thank you. I feel like for the person going through it and then the people that are you know their family and support system it's hard on them to watch somebody slipping away so yeah yeah, yeah i just watched it with my uh, my wife's grandfather was he has passed since but we watched watched it and it's you know it's extremely difficult thing everyone was as loving as they could be he's in the best possible place but it's still it's you know massive massive struggle yeah 
Um, have you gotten a chance to play these songs out much late uh, at all, or are you are you were we playing these songs for for the internet and for an audience kind of for the first time, or have you been on the road? Yeah, I've been on the road a bit, um, um, and I, I've I've gotten to road test them a little, and uh, and and I've played. I did some live streams through the pandemic and and played uh, some version of them a few times. So so some of my some people that that watch me closely be familiar with a couple of these um there's uh one I'll, I'll do in a minute here actually the one we're gonna do next that i don't think i've ever played on i, I played it live a few times but I, I don't think i played it uh uh on the on the interwebs so yeah. this will be a first well have you uh, have you had a chance to get any sort of fan feedback from help me remember have you have you heard stories about that song helping them to deal with their circumstance or help to process something that they had dealt with years prior yeah yeah i've had uh you know that's this one thing on this record that i um um has been really gratifying for me is a couple of these songs that first one that you get it all like i've had a lot of people tell me that they they just connect with it and relate to it as far as being in a relationship and giving all yourself to a relationship and and help me remember, I've had a lot of people that have, like like you said have experienced had a family member that then went through that and they watched that and um, so it seems like a, a lot of people that it resonates with some folks and and uh, that's uh, that's rewarding as a songwriter you know we're not gonna cure a disease or anything but but when, when you create something that helps people kind of articulate an emotion or 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 helps them feel not alone in that experience i think that's a pretty powerful thing yeah i mean i'm feeling it i would strongly suspect that everybody in this room right now is feeling it and got the the goosebumps in that in that feeling man it's, oh. it is very powerful so thanks for sharing it with us and um and all the music too what it's uh you you just said the title i think i know what are you going to play third today it's a uh, the song called uh nice things it's one i wrote with the uh, brothers osborne and uh um yeah it goes like this <laughs> Well, God came down to earth To enjoy what she created Took a fishing trip to Georgia To see what she could see Cast out a hole in line And thought she'd hook the big one Reel in an oil barrel and said, oh my me, this is why your whole world is on fire, this is why you can't drink from your own springs, this is why, this is why. The blue light started flashing As he slipped the handcuffs on her She thought this must be a joke And this is why Y'all are all strung out to Christmas This is why I left you all them seeds This is why This is why Angry mob, they were yelling about people 
Who should suffer pain eternal She asked one for a dollar They said sinner get a job And this is why I blessed you with compassion This is why y'all can't have nice things Oh, this is why y'all can't have nice things All right That's good, man. I like that song a lot. Thank you for sharing it with us today. I'm having a great time. Right on. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, man. We uh, So the last time we crossed paths, I'm pretty sure, was at Allison's uh, session in the New York studio. And I know that you got the chance to work with her uh, producing the record, which is which is great to be able to have that kind of productive nature and be able to work uh, alongside your spouse. Um, what does it look like when you do uh, when you guys sit down to create together? Yeah, uh, yeah. My wife Allison Moore is a, a fantastic singer-songwriter and now uh, author. She has her second book coming out in two weeks, and um, uh, and she's co-produced my last two records uh, and been involved in that. And uh, it's uh, I, it's wonderful for me. I mean, I, I she's uh, my first listener a lot of times, and I'll, I'll play my ideas for her and and. I have a hard time, hard time, in life and in the studio communicating what I really mean. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I have, I struggle to articulate stuff musically. Like I have a sound in my head or an idea that I'm going for, but I don't always um, uh, have the language to express it. And and with her, over the years we've you know developed a shorthand, and 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 that is a strength of hers. And so it's been it's it's nice to to have that, um, I, I trust her taste. And, um, um, uh, so it, it's just, it's, uh, it's just a wonderful thing. I, I feel really lucky to get to, to, uh, work with somebody that I not only respect and admire, but also, um, you know, go home with at the end of the day. And, and yeah. Uh, yeah, that's great, man. I mean, uh, yeah, having that skill to translate, a feeling into an actual executable knob to turn or a fader to push or whatever the case may be is is awesome man i'm glad that you guys found that yeah i mean i'm pretty caveman about stuff so i'm just like i just more you know and she's like what you're trying to say is this record and this reference and here's this thing we want this beat and i'm like yes exactly and and so um uh it's helpful for me in a studio setting in particular um and i feel like because we live together and we can work through these things, by the time we get into a studio, we've got a lot of the stuff dialed in and a lot of the things worked out so we can work pretty quickly. So it's fun. Nice. Well, dude, I'm looking forward to when it's out. On October 29th, You Get It All is out in the world, and we are about to hear a fourth song from it right now. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thanks again for having me, first of all. And uh, I'm going to uh, do this one. This is one I wrote with, with Sean McConnell and uh, with Allison. I think he's, is he here today or tomorrow? No. Or is he right now? Sean McConnell? Yeah, he's doing he, this. He was uh, two days ago. Oh, yeah. He, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sleepy. Left a real impression, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we, we got to write for the first time. We started this song, and then uh, I, and then I recruited Allison to, to help me land it. And... Uh, so this is uh this is called if it was up to me if it was up to me the fish would all be biting the 
words when I need writing They just fall out of my pen If it was up to me My bank account would have more zeros I'd be friends with all my heroes And they call me now and then If it was up to me And I'd live out by the sea And order extra rum with every single drink I'd let it and the waves drown the memory If it was up to me If it was up to me We'd all be driving 80 I'd be living like they paid me Instead of working to get paid If it was up to me My mistakes would not outlive me And everyone could just forgive me For all the ones I've made If it was up to me I'd have my own money tree And I'd buy all the things that I don't really need And they'd help me not to think About how it used to be If it was up to me life would be so easy Everyone would aim to please me And they'd never let me down If it was up to me I'd have no enemies And I'd receive the grace I need without apology And no one that I love would ever have to leave If it was up to me But it's not up to me Dude, this has been great. It's always good to see you. Thank you for sharing the music and have a great show. Your Americana set is tonight, right? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow night that, yeah. at Brooklyn Bowl? It's at Brooklyn Bowl, and uh, and we've got another one at the Hotel Bobby in the afternoon, I think, around 4 nice. or 5. So. Well, um, enjoy that, and enjoy the Brooklyn Maid show. It's entirely possible we'll see you on November 5th in Brooklyn at that new venue. You know there's a swimming pool in the green room at that place? I, yeah, <laughs> I, I've heard. Oh, yeah. I know it was in the green room, but yeah. Yeah, well, it's only available to you. I can't swim in that pool. It's for it's an artist thing. It's not, like, open to the public at all. Okay, as it yeah. should be. All yeah. right. Good, good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's dates all the way through the holidays. Uh, Stagecoach next year, so travel safely among all of those things. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, Best of luck on the record, man. You get it all comes out on October 29th. So uh, we will stay tuned. And thanks for, for sharing the music again.